Hey guys, welcome to the 22nd part of my series previewing the 2020-21 NBA season. And today we're talking about the Orlando Magic. So last season, the Magic finished with a 33-40 and record. And they're the 8th seed in the East. Um, they shockingly won the first game against the Bucks in the first round. But then proceeded to lose the next four. And then something else happened in the bubble is that Jonathan Isaac got injured and he will likely miss this whole season. So I'm not really going to be talking about in about him in this season preview, but that's a real shame because he's a really, really good defender and maybe the player with the highest potential on the Magic, um, both offensively and, of course, defensively, where he really excels. So hopefully he can get back stronger for next season, but he won't be playing for them this season, which is really too bad. Um, so this offseason, they drafted Cole Anthony with the 15th overall pick. Um, they signed Dwayne Bacon and a few other guys. And they lost DJ Augustine, West Owandu, and a few other guys. So nothing really notable this offseason um, except for the loss of Isaac to injury, which is really going to hurt them. So if we look at a projected starting lineup, I think their lineup is going to be Fultz, um, Evan Fournier, James Ennis, Aaron Gordon, and Nikola Vucevic. So for Markel Fultz, last season he averaged 12 points, 3 rebounds, and 5 assists. Um, first of all, um, it's great that he's back from his injuries and all the problems he had. Um, his shot isn't there right now, but he is a good playmaker, still a good playmaker and a good finisher, and he definitely has some potential, but I feel like maybe he's a bit overhyped and overrated just because he was the number one overall pick. And everyone is so excited just to see him play basketball. Um, he's not great, but he definitely has some upside with his playmaking and finishing. And hopefully he can take another step this year and just get back to playing where he was when he got drafted. Um, I don't know if the jumper will ever be there, but he does have some good playmaking, some good finishing. So... We'll see, but I think he'll be the starting point guard for the Magic. At shooting guard, they have Evan Fournier, who last season averaged 18.5 points a game. He's a, he's a good shooter and good scoring, a good score. Um, so are their main perimeter score for the Magic. Um, maybe a bit underrated, um, but this season he's he is on an expiring contract, so maybe they'll look to trade him because I don't know if they really want to be paying Fournier to be competing for the playoffs in the East. So we'll see, but he will, I, he might be on this team for the whole season. And if so, he's a really good scorer and he can, he's definitely their most important perimeter player. And they have James Ennis, who you feel is sort of just the placeholder for Isaac for when he gets back. Um, last season, Ennis averaged about eight and a half points and five boards. He's a solid defender, um, and there's this question about shooting. If he can be a good shooter, then he can be a decent 3 and D guy, but if not, then um, it's a bit shaky. So I'm not too sure about Ennis, but they do have Isaac for next season, hopefully. And they have Aaron Gordon, who last season averaged 14 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists. Um, we all know he's a great dunker, always fun to watch in the dunk contest and we've been hearing about his potential for quite a few seasons but it's never really come to fruition um he he definitely has that potential defensively um but the thing is he's just not a very good shooter offensively and he hasn't fully reached his potential and I think maybe a change of scenery could be beneficial for him instead of just staying with the magic where it feels like he's kind of stagnated so We'll see, but he's still a solid player, and of course the dunking, and maybe this season he will fulfill his potential defensively. And then they have Nikola Vucevic, who last season averaged 20 and 11, and he's a really good offensive player. Um, he's a good shooter, he's he's a good player in the post. Um, he's really the guy that they gave it to, and their best player. He's an all-star two years ago. Um, he's really been the one keeping them afloat. Um, and keeping them get in the race for the playoffs and uh, getting the, them the seventh seed and the eighth seed. So 
he's probably their most important player, um, and we've seen how important he is. Um, and he's not a terrible defender and a good offensive player, so I suspect he'll be solid again this season. And then off the bench, they have Cole Anthony, who was their draft pick this season. He was the 15th, 15th overall pick. He seems like a good shooter, um, has a good an- hang- handle. He's been playing well in preseason, so maybe he can provide some scoring off the bench and been that player that the Magic have really been looking for. Um, I-, I definitely have high hopes for him. And they have Terrence Ross, who averaged 15 points a game last season, and he's just a guy, a microwave off the bench, comes in, shoots threes, also a good dunker, um, not a very good defensive player, but that's not his job. So I suspect he'll continue to be a good player off the bench, and maybe he could move into the starting lineup if they want more offense instead of James Ennis. And then they have Dwayne Bacon, who's not very good at basketball, but he has a cool name. Um, they have Alfred al Aminu, who's kind of a meh player. I mean, he's a good defender, but he's not very good on offense. So you might have to play a bit more this season, though, with them missing Isaac. But he might be injured, too. And then they have Mo Bamba, who, you know, we, we all know about the potential and the song. Um, but it hasn't really worked out for him so far in, in his career. So we'll have to see. Maybe he can turn into something, but I don't really have high hopes for them. So if we look at the positives with this team, they're always a good defensive team, and Steve Clifford, the coach, deserves huge credit for that. They have a good defensive system, and despite not having great defensive per- personnel, they're always a good defensive team. So I think even while they're missing Isaac, they'll still be solid defensively, and that's always going to make you a solid team. And this is just a solid team. They have some good NBA players in Vucevic and Fournier and Gordon, and then they have a bit of potential in Fultz and Quanthe, Terrence Ross off the bench. So this is a solid team. Um, their backup forwards and center aren't great, but um, everywhere else they're pretty, pretty solid. And then they have Fultz and Quanthe's potential. So some positives with this team. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, but I just feel like they're a very average team. Um, and they sort of have a lack of talent and direction. Like, I would like to see them just sort of kind of try and put more faith in the young guys, which they don't really have too many great young guys. And I'd like to see them maybe get a lower seed and a higher draft pick because I feel like they need that franchise player. I don't think they're going to win anything meaningful with Vucevic. So they should maybe look to trade Fournier and see if they can get a first or so for him. Um, Just do things like that to maybe look to rebuild a bit because I can't see this being the base for a championship or contending team. So that's not very positive for them. So that's sort of where I'm at with the Orlando Magic. Um, I think they'll be a solid team. I suspect they'll be around the 10th seed. I suspect the uh, Hawks and Wizards are better just because of the star power and the depth. So... Not too optimistic on the magic, but I mean, you never know. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys.